Well, what if I want to take my family camping, but I don't have a monster truck, and I don't want something entry level? Stay tuned. I got something you're going to like. Welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Bishop's RV, hanging out here with the updates on the 171BH uh, J Feather. Um, this is uh, a, a easy to maintain, easy to tow around cargo bunkhouse model. What I mean by that, there's a uh, basically a miniature entry door over by the bunk area, the deadbolt, so you have privacy, so some gas station murder hobos not running off with your children. Uh, that's a uh, important factor I like to point out there, obviously. Um, but the the bottom bunk folds up and it gets out the way. It has a move bunk get out the way system is the technical term for it. I do believe nerdism number thirty seven and. You can use it, obviously, going down the road for all your, your kids' cargo bunk stuff, but you could also use this thing like an e-bike holder. Like, I have a folding electric 3.0 uh, e-bike. You can fit two of those in that cargo bunk area. Just make sure you pat them a little bit and strap them down. Now, uh, new and in store for the 24 season, they have obviously fully facelifted this thing. They've homogenized their two optional decors into one, I personally think, better looking decor. It just feels a lot more cohesive and smooth all the way through. They've also increased the size of the refrigerator. So, you know, if you got a couple growing kids in this thing, you actually, you know, have the capacity to keep them fed. <laughs> Not to mention, it just leaves more room for the bottled water and the barley pop, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, they've done some other things, too, like standardized their um, optional solar package. So now, by default, you have a 30-amp controller and 200 watts of solar instead of nothing and only prep by default. <coughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about killed myself here. Anyway, uh, what I'm getting at is not only do you have that uh, 200 watts of solar, you have the ability to option in a little bit further as well and double up on that uh, as well as add an inverter. My eyes are watering after choking. I can barely talk. I'm trying to hold it together. I should probably just cut this and uh, move on, but that's life, you know? You, you trip over, you stumble, you skin your knee, you get up, you roll with it, you go camping, you get dirty, you have fun, you make some memories. That's what you do. Um, it's got a couple things you might not like. I'm going to try to showcase everything I can as we go here. Leave me questions, leave me comments, let me know what you like and dislike, and let's get going. When you're someone like me, who's a professional looker at her of RVs, and I've seen this floor plan, I don't even know how many hundreds of times across different brands in all the years I've been doing this, I really appreciate when something is updated and the little tweaks are put in here. It's kind of fun for me. It's almost like a scavenger hunt scene. Like, what can I find? What's new? Like this table. Instead of the knee knocker pedestal post dining table, it's this like um, sawhorse style folding scissor leg thing that you can float the table around if need be. And I'm kind of creeping around the corner here because there are some household and USB outlets down there right by the dinette, which is really handy. That's actually something else, you know. It's one of a lot of reasons this is a few bucks more than something else with a similar floor plan. It's got a bunch of additional little extras applied to it. It's also physically bigger than many other things in like a head-to-head -head class and category. It's six and a half foot tall inside, but it's six and a half foot tall all the way across the, uh, the linear ceiling. It is vaulted on the exterior roof for water runoff, of course. But the taller sidewalls means more cabinetry. It means taller bunk space, and it means more headroom in the shower, which otherwise my head would be just banging in the skylight. And it's close on this one, certainly, but it uh, I can get by. Now, something, it makes people kind of grind their teeth a little bit. This is an 80-inch long bed. Cool. It's a 54-inch wide bed. It's not quite a true queen. It's six inches more narrow as compared to a true queen. And there's some major dollar reasons they don't extend the RV another six inches. If they did, the average cost of this floor plan would go up by thousands. Not because of the extra construction required, because of what that does in terms of shipping the RV and how you can only ship, uh, you know, two at a time instead of three at a time on a flatbed truck and spread that shipping across, uh, you know, multiple units. So, there's some major dollar reasons manufacturers do those things, and you're like, that's stupid. Why do they do that? Well, you know, money, honey. That's the reason why. Now, up top here, um, factory standard in the living room and the kitchen, you got that big uh, XL vent fan right there. You have a smaller vent fan in the bathroom, and uh, it's a hot day. And actually, I've been using the J Feather Park next to us right here. Uh, actually, we'll get a good look at it through these giant picture windows. 
I've been using the one over here as my base camp. And I just left a little window cracked. And I've got that fan running over there. And it's easily 10 degrees cooler in that RV as compared to uh, everything else outside. In case you're kind of wondering, that's the 173 MRB. Yeah, you know me. And I don't know why the entire model number is all of those words in my head. But that's how I do it. Apparently Montel Jordan style. Carpetless. Ventless. Easy cleaning, pet friendly flooring system here. And again, this is one of those areas like instead of having uh, an aggressively vaulted roof that really wouldn't allow you to have good overhead cabinet space, they're able to accomplish that here. Uh, your solar charge controller, you're going to find in all of them now. It's no longer an optional item. 30 uh, amp solar controller standard on all these. Um, you can uh, also upgrade the solar from 200 watts of factory solar to 400 now. Um, you could always get the 400 package, but the 200 watt package, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. The 200 watt package used to be optional as well. Something else that's optional, up top there, you see that orange sticker on the microwave. That is telling us that this has been upgraded with the convection air fryer uh, microwave oven option. So you can do uh, some baking of your cookies and biscuits, albeit not based on propane. You're going to need electricity to accomplish that, but you can do it. And these little feathers still have uh, a basic version of the J-Command system. One of the cool things with that is that also has tire pressure monitoring, but um, that is your, your lights. You, you can do your systems monitoring on that. You can Bluetooth to it to your phone. You can control your air conditioner and your heater and stuff like that. There's a lot of things you can do off of it. Now, there's, it would definitely help the countertop prep space here if they had some kind of folding extension leaf. I don't know if there's some kind of fire code reason, like if it blocks the door and they can't do it. I'm not entirely sure, but I see a lot of manufacturers not do that. The refrigerator is a 12-volt compressor fridge. There is no longer an optional gas electric two-way. 12-volt compressor is the fridge that these come with. That is it. It is at least a larger one than it was last year. It's now 10 cubic foot instead of 12, which is cool. So it really maximizes all that cold storage capacity. Now, this does have that cargo bunk kind of thing going on. It's, uh, what do you think about this, though? Do you like it when manufacturers totally block that off? Or do you like that kind of open cargo netting in case you want to get down there? Or take the netting off and use it like a bed for the dog or something? Now, uh, single bed bunks like this, each bed's going to be rated for 300 pounds in any Jayco RV. They're very, very consistent on their bunk ratings. And actually, what I'm hunting for here, I don't remember seeing any, are power outlets for the bunks. I do like how... The uh, upper bunk window does open for airflow. The bottom bunk window does not, but it does still have privacy. Yeah, there we go. Upper and lower beds have household USB outlets and the handy little phone pocket. That is, on a rainy day stuck in the RV, that is so, so useful. Something else that's useful? Here's a couple of them. How about the fact that this RV has separate curtains for the upper and lower beds? And if you're taking note, you've also got that uh, like ladder tree, that swing open ladder tree built right into the camper. I think that's like a Jayco exclusive thing because I don't see other manufacturers having that thing. Now between the two bunks and the um, dining table, everything folds down. You could, you could pack and stack about five people into this for total max sleeping capacity. Now obviously three of those are gonna have to be smaller individuals or big dogs. <laughs> you're, uh, you know, five full-grown RV nerds like me not going to fit in here too awful well. Um, the, uh, they don't offer a propane oven, but again, you do have that convection air fryer microwave option. It is a standard microwave by default, so if you're ordering one of these or shopping, make sure you find out exactly what it has or doesn't have. You know, that might be something to look into. The refrigerator door can swing open either way, so if you're back there in the bathroom and you need to reach in because you're spending a little extra time on the toilet there, and you need to get a, I don't know, get ready for a shower beers or something like that. Well, you know, you can reach in there and grab that cold Kurs light or whatever works for you. Lately here, I've switched over to Mick Ultra. It's just, I don't know, a little less bitey sometimes. I'm a wimp when it comes to drinking, you know. I, I, eh, whatever. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> We're going to get into the bathroom and look at the, uh, the space around that toilet. I will tell you, right-handed folks, you're fine. Lefties, you may be bonking your funny bone on that door jam a little bit. I'm not sure, not being a lefty and holding the camera with my left hand, I didn't have a really good opportunity to check. I love the double medicine cabinet and a, and a sink in the bathroom. So you don't have to wash your bathroom hands in the kitchen. There are some folks who really, really don't appreciate that. Notice that radius bar in the shower. And the skylight on this one is not quite as big as some of the others. I suspect they had to fit it right between a couple of the roof trusses. I could stand in the shower, in the bubble, and where I'm going to stand in the shower to do my job, 
it's fine. Um, you might feel it's a little bit different. Again, sometimes it's those little things. You want to get in a camper. You want to kind of try it on for size to see how it fits you. Man, I had the air running in here, and it is a hot day. I am already a sweaty Betty in this thing. But um, the air conditioner actually does crank pretty good in here. It cooled it down very quickly when I was running it. Um, what I'm getting at here, uh, no slides. Easy, easy kind of camping. That allows for what I call stealth mode camping. If you pull into the Cracker Barrel overnight or something like that, you don't have to open slides. You don't have to really draw extra attention to yourself. But I got a question for you. What if that was some kind of Murphy bed? You might lose a little bit like that, that cabinet storage down there at the bottom by the floor. You might lose some of that. Is that something you'd be interested in? Is that something you think that they should explore? Leave a comment. Let me know. Now, if you got a half ton, you're going to yank this thing all over the place, uh, uphill, downhill, both ways, no problems there. But not everybody, you know, has the uh, a truck of that size. What if you've got like a tow package midsize pickup? You don't want to get a brand new truck or you got a bigger SUV so you can actually haul the whole family and have seating and comfort for everyone. Well, this can work there too. That's kind of the benefit of a floor plane like this. Still gives you a lot of those nicer upper end features, but dynamite in a smaller package. Now, uh, up front here, you've got dual 20 pound tanks instead of a, a single 20 like you find on a lot of single axle RVs. Very often in the RV industry, the number of propane bottles you get mirrors the number of axles that you get. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. You can also take that further and option this with 30 pound propane tanks to have double to triple the propane most other things uh, tend to have, which is uh, kind of cool, or 50% more to, to actually 150% more, depending on what you're looking at. The walls, they are double ASDEL. So basically uh, composite and aluminum constructed walls. Uh, so in the walls, there's no real wood product. God forbid you have a leak that could rot. Now there's still plenty of things in the RV made of wood product that could rot. So uh, be careful about that. If somebody ever says something is like leak proof or anything like that, just get away from them. That I, I can't even imagine that kind of stupidity coming out of someone's mouth, but I know it's out there. Uh, the passer appears a nice little touch. You see those handy power outlets, and we are prepped and ready for a full observation camera suite, which is that little black thing sitting off the marker light right there. Backing up a little bit, you see the 2 plus 3 blue sticker in the window right there in that Jayco Bluebird color. Um, that is one of their more exceptional qualities here. They have a 2 plus 3 year warranty, which is, uh, you know, a lot of brands will have uh, like a one, well, most brands have a one year warranty. Some brands really want you to think they have a three year warranty, but they, they don't. There's, there's really no three year warranties in the towable RV industry. There's three year structural, but this has that coverage, but all the rest of the stuff, well, that's covered for twice as long as most brands, uh, you know, tend to do. Um, the awning on here is uh, as big as they could make it. It's not the world's biggest awning, but it's not the world's biggest camper. So I think they did the best they possibly really could here. Nice space down there. If you got a couple chairs, a picnic table, you got some room to stay uh, down in the shade. There's also outside TV hookups right here. And thankfully, they actually do put a uh, mount, and there is actually a, a TV bracket that comes with this, so you can mount a TV to it right here. It always kind of spooks me. I see manufacturers sometimes put a sticker on the side of a fiberglass wall that says TV prep, mount TV here. Mmm. I don't like the idea of drilling screws through factory fiberglass. That just is not my idea of a good time. You might have noticed down in the background before I started looking at that griddle, just in front of that uh, stabilizer jack, there is a stinky slinky sewer hose tube so uh, you can uh, keep your sewer stuff away from the rest of your camp stuff, which is real awful nice. And speaking of the stabilizers, you have not just rear but also front stabilizers. I point that out because that is something a lot of single axle RVs don't do. And they're actually using the newer LCI quick drop stabilizers that are rated to be used like if you have a, a hex bolt adapter on a you know impact drill you can use those on this and these things provide much better stability which is a problem single axle RVs actually suffer from it's hard to keep them really stable now you, you've got some nice window coverage here albeit on the neighbor's side of the camper but with this layout unless you want to extend it about a foot and a half to two feet which drastically changes the weights and everything um, it'll it'll kind of change a lot of the things that have to happen in this RV. There's not really a way around it, you know. I, someone's going to say, yeah, well, what about like a Wolf Pup 17JG or whatever? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it can do it. But um, wait a minute. No, that has a campsite uh, kitchen. It doesn't matter. You get the idea. I think you get what I'm talking about. This is cool. So there's a deadbolt here, you know, for privacy. But a full viewing window in the bunk still with the bottom up privacy shade. 
and they have an easy to operate move bunk get out the way system even with my left chicken arm which is not very strong i can snap that sucker right in place and it is very secure um, again, I've uh, been able to successfully load like my uh, e-bikes and cargo bunkhouses like this. I will tell you I've not personally tested it in this floor plan, so please take that insight with a grain of salt. Um, down here, though, I really like the cargo tie-downs that they put in that little compartment. That way, you've got a perfect little place to, to keep Aunt Edna secure if she happens to croak on the Clark W. Griswold family vacation. Now, as we back up here, boring stuff. Full hot cold outside utility shower, black tank flush, but those are useful features and a tankless on demand water heater. So if you've got the whole family taking back to back showers, uh, you know, early in the morning, late at night, whatever the case may be, uh, nobody really has to suffer with dealing with a, uh, a cold shower. I always try to let my wife and kid go first and give them the warm water when we go camping. And more often than not, I have taken a very fast, chilly military shower to get rinsed off and then circled back later once the water heater had a chance to catch up. You don't got to deal with that here. So leave me a couple notes. Let me know what you think about this one. Um, I'm going to leave you a whole bunch of links in the video description for pricing, for availability, and for similar floor plans from other manufacturers. You know, whether it's GeoPro or maybe you, you like the layout, but you want something just more basic and budget friendly. The little J Flight SLX will do that. There's Wolf Pups. There's a whole world of manufacturers who build a floor plan like this because it's a good layout, you know, but this is definitely not the cheapest. This is definitely not the lightest. This is something where you want all the fancy things, but you want to keep the RV as small as possible. That's where she comes in. And if you like how we show you the good with the bad and help you understand all that, hit that subscribe button, like our video. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.